It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Welcome. You're listening to Bucked Up with Sam Buck. trying to do my thing man you know there's a lot of dope artists out there a lot of a lot of good music out there so I'm, I'm i'm really just trying to you know carve out a little section for myself you know what i mean and and uh yeah it's 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 it feels humbling that i'm, I'm able to um you know kind of get it out there in, in such a way where it's it's fast you know what i mean i had people tell me damn you feel like came out of nowhere and then all of a sudden you're everywhere and it's like well that was part of the that was part of it you know what i mean that was part of the the plan from the very beginning was get all this stuff ready to go. And it was when it was time to go is just boom, flood, flood the market with it. You know what I mean? And put out totally four albums in a year or whatever it was. And you know, it's 2021's it's going to be the same thing, but a little, a little more elevated. Yeah. Well, that was the thing that when you said, um, when you were said you had like a busy morning and you, you like you're a family man and you got like you go to the gym and you're you've had such a crazy 2020 that's a another reason i was really excited to have you on because it was like damn you really you show that you can make anything happen if you put your mind to it oh yeah man you know to be honest with you i think like i was telling you i only I only really have time to really like um sit down in, 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 in the studio and, and really, you know, make music, produce, mix songs, whatever it is I'm working on that day, really one day a week. And even that day, a couple hours, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like That's three, crazy. four hours and I'm able to uh, crank it out. Like today, after we get done, I'm going to run down, go get a little workout in real quick and then, and then come back and lock myself in the studio and uh, record like nine songs. So me and me and the homie Milano Constantine got a full length album coming out, um, fully produced by me. He got a couple joints on there that he produced, um, but he knocked all his verses out quick. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> you know, now I'm kind of, now I'm behind the eight ball. Now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually it's the other way around, but uh, it, it's a good, it's a, it's a good, um, it's a good problem to have. You know what I mean? Knowing that you got 10 crazy, versus just sitting right there ready to go and uh, i think people are gonna people are gonna like that one a lot you know we put out a single uh not too long ago called the hearse and that's the first yeah, thing I that. yeah i appreciate it man and, and uh yeah so if that's kind of like a you know precursor to what the album's gonna be i think people are gonna be you know they'll, they'll like it i think i think people you said like you were you like sat on a lot of music before you put out because your first album on at least like the uh major streaming was um in 2019 was that yeah. were you sitting on a lot of that before you put it out um yeah so like i had the season done so that was like the first one i put out and that has you know a whole bunch of people on it you know all the all the underground guys on it that everyone likes you know, daniel son and Rome Streets, Riggs, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of dope artists on there. Smooth, that's that's my dude right there. Um, I had that one probably. I was probably holding on to that one for like a good shit. I don't know, probably probably a year, almost a year maybe. And then I just wanted yeah. to make sure it was perfect. You know what I mean? Everything was was firing. You know, I actually had it mixed and mastered a certain way. And then I was, I, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't speaking to me. You know what I mean? So I went, we went in, remastered, remixed everything, got it, got it sounding right. And then got the artwork dialed in and, and, uh, and, and put it out there. Well, 2020 was such a great year for like every single artist that that was on that project. And uh, yeah, I was up in that project so much. So that yeah. almost, it's great that you waited almost because it let the, uh, the right. artist kind of bring that in how uh how long have you been making music have you been doing it your whole life well you know what it's it's kind of it's kind of funny because uh i uh i had a i had a good friend growing up when i was like 
12, 13, something like that. His dad was a, a, a Dominican jazz musician. And so he used to have this whole room in his house that had, you know, all kinds of instruments and like recording equipment and all kinds of stuff like that. So when his dad wasn't around, uh, we'd sneak in there and, and mess around with all this shit and play drums or whatever. You know, that was actually the first instrument that, that I gravitated towards was drums. So I remember sitting there trying to, trying to like play a beat or whatever. And uh, I don't know, man, this shit just stuck with me. Like I loved it. And uh, I remember he like busted us one day, right? We were in there for <laughs> maybe overextended our stay in there. You know what I mean? And, and but it actually yeah. turned out to be a good thing. Cause he was, I think he uh, he appreciated the fact that we were so interested in, in music, <clears throat> so he and had a passion at it. Yeah. yeah, showed us how to kind of play stuff and let us go in there and, and mess around a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's kind of how it started, man. And then it just uh, was it always started. rap? Were you, know you always a? I, uh, I I I always you know that was the first thing I gravitated towards, obviously, because the the neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, all the all the friends that I used to have back then, you know, everyone was into hip hop. You know, everyone was mm -hmm. rapping or beatboxing or you know doing something like that. And so it was really like and really easy to just gravitate towards that, you know. And then on the flip side, I had I had friends that were listening to like Slayer and like Sepultura and like hardcore, you know, heavy metal shit like that. So. I, there's some of that stuff that I like and it's funny because I was actually in a, in a in a hardcore band for a little while like we we're signed to a record label and we toured and we did all that shit it's fucking funny oh really <laughs> well what's the band it's called uh Contra and uh like, Contra, like, like, okay like video game yeah and uh and we weren't like crazy big or anything but we I mean we we're signed to a label we toured we went everywhere and uh you know it was it was like on the brink of becoming kind of big you know like if we would play shows in our hometown like ventura oxnard something like that mm -hmm. there would be hundreds and hundreds of people there like so we already had that buzz going and then um you know we and we would play shows in like new york and there would be hundreds and hundreds of people you know what i mean so like we had mm -hmm. the thing going but it's just like anything else man you know you try to get five or six people going in the same direction and it's just you know life life's funny like that man you know it all it didn't didn't quite work out um, you know, there was some issues with some band members or whatever, and, you know, shit, shit just, uh, shit just kind of fell apart. But, uh, you know, what I learned from it was, is, is, you know, if you take it serious and you really kind of like hone in on your craft and, and you, you know, you really want to take the, take it kind of to that next level, you know, man, you gotta, it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to rely on other people, man. You know what I mean? Cause music yeah. is so such a personal thing you know what i mean like any every artist that i've worked with you know they got their own personal relationship with with music you know what i mean so like me you know i've i've had my ups and downs with it where i'm like ah fuck this shit i, I ain't gonna do this shit no more i'm gonna hang it up and you know i think a lot of people probably low-key um go through that where they just say you know what this is not for me anymore it's it's uh it's stressful or it's not going anywhere or whatever it's a waste of time you know, whatever, whatever thoughts, you know, go through their mind when they're uh, going through those kind of things. Um, you know, but for me, I uh, always, I don't know, man, I just always had a, uh, a love hate kind of thing with it because it's, there has been times where I'm like, you know, you push, you push the needle on it and it gets so far, so far, and then something happens and you kind of feel like derailed from it. Yeah. But uh, those are all things that you, you, those are all gems that you, you take and you learn from it and, and you get better. You go back to the drawing board, you start figuring out, okay, am I making music to, uh, to make other people happy? Am I making music to like make my peers happy? You know, cause let's be honest, man, if, if rappers and producers depended on other rappers and other producers to, to push the music and, 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 and support the music, there'd be a bunch of broke, <laughs> not, there'd be like one successful album in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the, when you're talking about your background in hardcore, my dad was a metal drummer, like heavy metal. So like, oh, yeah. I grew up listening to like, you know, all like Pantera, Gojira, yeah. like yeah. Opeth, all, uh, um, all that stuff. And my favorite metal band, Sepultura. I love that. Band. Oh yeah. So yeah. So, but I never, 
that was like i gravitated to a rap like he also played me the predator by ice cube and that was like by eight years old i knew every word to that album like i grew up but it's a very similar style and that's why i like the kind of the grungy the grimy rap that's coming out right now i feel you i feel you so like that's that's why i uh, it, it was drawn to your music because you have that like that, that, that grimy that shit. Crunchy, yeah, man. That's exactly. I love that. I love that, um, I love that kind of crunchy, low end um, sound. But I don't. I don't. I think you know, and and that's the thing with it. With with you know, you got like the Griselda guys killing it. You know, those guys started a own, their own thing, and that's and that's dope. Yeah. But you know, with anything else, man, you know, people try to take that style and 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 repurpose it and and. You know, so it just gets lost. You know, I mean, it gets watered down, and next thing you know, everyone's trying to rap on, you know, seventy-six BPM beats and shit like that, and those gritty drums and all that. So for me, dude, I've I've always liked, I like that kind of crunchy, darker sound. But the shit has mm-hmm. to, it has to, it has to bounce. You know, what I mean, if and the shit ain't bouncing, if the drums yeah. ain't, you know, moving along, it's not for me, man. You know what I mean? for, who do you think like the best of taking that sound and changing it is right now? I mean, you worked with <clears throat> Edo, who's fucking yeah, amazing, and he's been in it for so long. Yeah, yeah, just killing. Yeah, yeah. um, I think I think production wise, um, shit. You know, there's there's a lot of really dope producers out there. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that don't get no credit or no shine. You know what I mean? And and like I just did a track uh, recently, um with the homie, uh, probably gonna butcher his name, so I apologize in, in advance, but I think he goes by like DM. Um, mm-hmm. He just track with me, Ito and, and Boldy James, and uh, he's dope, you know what I mean? And he, he's from like Portugal. What's that, with Struggle Mike, is that the one yeah. or is this a different one? Yeah, uh, that's a great yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, so you know, you got, you got those kind of dudes that are just, you know, getting placements and, and shit like that, and then you got guys like me who, who are putting together producer albums and trying to really, you know, push, push, push the bar on it. Um, and then I think you got it's great that producers are getting so much shit. Yeah. Like they really can yeah. shine now and you can put yeah. out a production album or work with a single artist for an, over an album. And it really, it shows now. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it, that's kind of a tough one to answer because there's just so many dope producers out there. Yeah. Um, my boy, Rob De Niro, me and him did an album together. Um, I love, I love that dude's style, man. It's real kind of smooth and, and just kind of like in the pocket, you know what I mean? Like it's not overly produced. Um, it's not super loud in your face, all crazy, but it's just Mm -hmm. like the only way I could really describe it is like in the pocket, you know what I mean? So we, we, we clicked up on something and we put out a a project called, uh, strength in numbers. And we did that one and we put that out on uh, Copenhagen. Um, and it did pretty well, you know what I mean? Like, I think it sold out like first day or second day or something like that so um and he's just a really cool dude you know what i mean so to be honest with you you know you could have mad talent and and you know twenty thousand followers on instagram or whatever but if you're i mean i know ain't there's no kids watching this you know if you're a fucking piece of shit it doesn't matter everybody love everybody doesn't matter how good you are you know what i mean or how many followers yeah. you got so um that's kind of I think that's just like man, the, the older, the old man in me kind of speaking out, you know what I mean? Cause mm-hmm. I, I, it doesn't matter to me, like what you do or, or who you do it with. It, if you're not a good person, man, that's that shit. I don't, I won't work with you. It doesn't matter who you are. And that's kind of like, not, yeah. I feel the same way. Well, I'm a, I'm a stand up. I'm a comedian. And the thing okay. I like about that is it's, it's like me. I don't have to, as you said, like with your band, like it's tough getting five people or six people all to like follow the same path. And something I really liked about comedy is it's like, it's on me. Or even with podcasting, it's like, I get to have a conversation with you. People aren't telling me like what the conversation has to be like, who, you know, what questions I have to ask. I like the smaller group. And that's what I like about rap too. And why it's probably, you know, blowing up and the underground is blowing up is you've been putting out albums with single artists and they're yeah. great because you can really build a relationship over an album. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that, man. It's, uh, and that's kind of, and that's, I think the beauty of it for me is, uh, you know, you're, you're the end all be all, you know what I mean? So if, if, if something's not right, something's not clicking, 
you know, then, then, you know, you don't have no one to blame, but you for it, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, you know, there, there is a, there is a underbelly to working with artists, man, you know, and, and going through it and, and kind of making my bones in, in the underground and, and trying to be a businessman about it. And uh, I've always come correct. I'm a straight shooter. You know what I mean? If people want to, if they need uh, three, $400 for a verse, whatever, boom, all day, let's make it happen. You know what I mean? Like if I'm reaching yeah. out to on some business, I don't expect anybody to do anything for free. You know what I mean? So I, that's never been an issue for me, but what the issue is, if I, if I pay a motherfucker for something and they're sitting on it for four five, six, seven months, that's a problem. You know what I mean? Like, yo, how hard is it to fucking lay down a 16 bar verse? You know what I mean? Like you're a rapper, right. you're whatever. You know what I mean? Like that shit, you know, I don't even really rap, but I do. I could, I fucking, if someone pays me for a verse, I get that shit back like same day, next day. You know what I mean? Like that's how I get mm -hmm. down. And even with beats, you know, someone pays me for a beat, it's that day. You know what I mean? I'm always, I'm always ready to go. You know what I mean? So um, I get it. You know, people got lives and, and, you know, just like me, you got families and jobs. A lot of these fools got jobs, you know what I mean? Or they don't. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, that's part of the business side of it that gets a little, gets a little fucked up because you know it creates a little animosity you know what i mean because you're like yo you know i paid you five six months ago you know I, and I, I hate hounding people i hate having to be like yo peace peace bro or you know whatever right. trying to get him up on, on instagram or whatever that shit that shit's annoying it makes me feel like i'm being like naggy you know what i'm saying and that's that's not the kind of person i am i'm really fucking easy going um and I'm, I'm, I'm an honest dude. You know what I mean? If I say I'm going to do something, I, I do it. And mm -hmm. it fucking sucks when you get that impression from someone and like they're, they're going to kind of reciprocate that same thing. And they, and they don't, they fucking let you down and shit. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's like a double-sided sword with the independent, uh, working with independent too. And, and it's nice because you don't have anyone breathing down your back, but also it's kind of like at the will of the winds. It's like, yeah. Not however people feel like that's just what it's gonna what it's gonna be like for that day do yeah. you so you said the business side was tough in the the hardcore world is that is it it's funny like rappers can kind of they don't make you don't make as much money off of rap but like the merch game and the vinyl game is so big now but yeah. that's like a whole other set of skills you have to learn is well, that you know, and, and no that's true so you know what's crazy is is with the uh with the, I was trying to be discreet and smoke my pen, but this thing's not. You working. can smoke your. I'll smoke my pen too. Right, you don't okay. have to. This is called bucked up for a reason. I just smoked a fat <laughs> joint out on my porch before I came and sat down. Well, I got a pack of bowl now because my fucking pen was being a bitch. So I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. Um, I see. I'm happy that you because I like to smoke and go for a run. That's like my work. Like yeah, I like I, to work out high. That's my I fucking do, my pre workout is i fucking smoke before i go in the gym and i'm i'm, down, I'm ready to go <laughs> it's the per you put on music and you just zone out that's the like you can just be on like autopilot going, yeah i don't like going all cracked out on those uh pre-workout powders and all that shit's nasty dude They're, no I'm, not at all fuck with none of that shit. plus I don't, I don't drink caffeine either i don't drink coffee or nothing like that i don't drink caffeine either. i don't that's why i like no caffeine no t i don't like any of that shit that's it doesn't make me feel good it makes me feel that's jittery exactly i'm the same way man so oh, i'm i'm right there with you but um i guess to go back to answer the uh the question about the hardcore stuff was um you know for a little for a little while we were pretty much i wasn't an, i wasn't a uh, an original member of the band either like these guys already had their thing going um and i had i knew a couple of the guys we, you were a drummer you, know, you were the drummer uh, actually i was the i was the uh the vocals i was the guy doing okay. all the, the screaming and shit yeah and um it was fun, you know what I mean? Like I had the energy for it. I was into it. I loved that kind of music. Um, and it was it was in in you know the early two thousands. That shit was like booming, booming. Like it was everywhere, you know what I mean? And and it wasn't like I don't know. I felt like the people that were were into that shit, like were also into underground hip hop. Were also into like other different kind of like sub genres and that and that could that's something that i that i totally related with because it wasn't like you know i would be around 
a bunch of hardcore bands. We'd listen to only hardcore music. We'd only go to hardcore shows. No, fuck that. We'd most of the time I didn't even listen to that shit outside of playing it or practicing or, you know, I'd go back to the pad and listen to freaking, you know, large professor or Wu Tang or Chino XL or something like something, you know, something like that. And, uh, yeah. And then, and I noticed that a lot of people around me did the same shit. And it was funny cause you know, on tours, we'd go around all over the place. You know, we toured everywhere in America multiple times. And, uh, you know, there'd be people outside of the, of, of the venues or at the merch table, just chopping it up with us. And, and, um, we'd be like doing for like freestyling, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was kind of cool, man. So I never totally walked away from it. You know what I mean? Like it's always, yeah. hip hop's always kind of been there and, and everything like that. But, uh, you know, we didn't you think make you went it. back to it because it was a, a passion. Like, is well, that it, why you ended up there? Yeah, I think so, man. Because, like, honestly, because even after like the whole hardcore thing ended, I did. I had my own. Uh, my main hustle for a long time was was MCing, rapping. I actually used to have a different name and everything. I I used to go by uh, Savo, and I would play shows all over the place. I mean, I play shows with like Razcast, Chino XL. Um, fuck, I'd play shows with, like, Juicy J. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah I, know, it was, like, I was always the odd man out on those. Trust me, man. It was weird. Red Man, Method Man, shit like that. We had a dope venue in Ventura. I'm doing a stand-up show called Caribbean Delights next week. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, we made we made a little bit of money. But it wasn't like, <clears throat> you know, we're fucking, you know, we're still eating SpaghettiOs out of the can and shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> grody, uh, you know, tour life type shit, you know? Yeah, well, that's like, I'm still in the red for podcasting and comedy. Like, I'm still not making, but it's like, you kind of have to just grind and know that it'll pay off one day. And that's why it goes back to, it's great with the rap game but you do have to learn the whole new set of still skills is like the records and the vinyls blowing up and like yeah. merch like you know, you know the cool thing about that is uh my brother over at copenhagen martin good dude man solid guy puts out a, a good product working i mean that dude is dropping shit every month with with you know everyone he got he got to work out there with everybody and uh but he's he's one of those guys that you know, he's a selfless dude, you know what I mean? Like he, he does it for the culture, like real facts. You know, I don't know if this dude mm -hmm. makes a whole lot of real money off of it. You know what I mean? He's paying artists thousands and thousands of dollars. He's, uh, he's giving them allotments, you know, he's out of Denmark. So, you know, he has to pay for the shipping and all this shit. I mean, it's, I don't imagine it's, it's an easy gig, you know, cause I've done merch on my own and I'm like, fuck, you know, post office is a, block away from my house you know what i mean I'm like yeah do i really got to go to the post office you know I, mean? you know, like, I can't tell it with <laughs> yeah, that it only got you know i'm selling you know 20 30 40 cds at a time or something like that a couple albums you know what i mean and it's not a lot so i could imagine if you know i have a backlog of vinyl records that need to go all over the world you know i got a thousand orders i don't know i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to keep up with that man to be honest with you because um you know, I got a full-time gig and that, that job right there, I mean, that shit demands a lot of my time. You know, I'm a, I'm a senior manager at the place and it's a, it's uh very demanding. You know, I'm there usually there at five 30 in the morning, every single day, you know what I mean? And, and uh, it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of work, you know what I mean? So. But that's um, impressive. The amount that you can get done and like be with your family and work out and like be able to create such a good product. It's, it shows it. that you're doing the right thing and you got to just like, to be honest with you, man, it, 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 there would be no body bag then or anything like that. If, uh, if, if I didn't have my personal affairs in order, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the fact that I, that I'm, that I'm, confident and i'm comfortable uh, comfortable in the fact that i know i'm handling business as a man i'm taking care of my 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 daughter um you know me and my me and my girlfriend uh that situation is beautiful the house everything's taken care of all the all the real life affairs are in order you know what i mean there's no financial struggling nothing everything's like set in stone you know what i mean so that mm -hmm. allows me to kind of get that 
that sense of relief. And I think that's why the music comes across so clear. You know what I mean? It comes across as abundant as it does. And because I, I'm not, I'm, there's no stress, man. My stress levels are like, fuck, like zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't even... Well, that's, that's fantastic. And it does show that like with the rap game and with uh, a comedy too, like the ones who are making it, like who are really not the ones that the labels are pushing are Oh, like I'm 23. I'm young. Uh, so like are older and it shows that like, if you just stick with it, it really shines through your, like the years you have dedicated, like, uh, you know, Griselda, I know, but they didn't make it until they were much later in life. And that's when they started really pushing it. I mean, of course they spent years buying bars, stuff like that, but it does show that you just have to, you know, keep pushing it and everything. Do you look back at everything you learn like as learning? You know what's crazy, bro, is I don't, um, I don't, I don't come off like on some gangster shit. You know what I mean? I don't proclaim to, to, to have that kind of, I never sold drugs. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you what, I've been around people like that my whole life. You know what I mean? Like growing up where I grew up at, <laughs> yo, <laughs> I've seen guys get stabbed in the face. I've seen people get ran over by cars been shot at, you know what I mean? All that shit. Done drugs myself personally, you know what I mean? Like nothing sweet, bro, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of those yeah. kind of early experiences kind of help craft and shape you in a certain way, um, even without being overly like talking about it or trying to brag about it or whatever on a song or whatever, you know what I mean? There's metaphors. And I think every rapper uses a fucking gun bar at some point in time in in their rap life, even if they never even mm. fucking shot one. You know what I mean? I think it's just, it's almost like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have an analogy right now, but you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just part of the blueprint almost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, feel like you're, yeah. Do you feel like you're more yourself as a producer? Like, is that where you, or do you like the, like rapping? Can you put, do you because you, you said you don't rap as much anymore, but you said you used I, to. I don't, um, you know what? I, I think the stuff that I used to do, uh, and it's funny, I'll send you some shit and you could kind of be, you could be the uh, the judge of that. Um, awesome, I, I can't wait. I used to be more like so much trying to be a really good, like hardcore MC, like everything had to be crystal, like just sharp and people it, it, like I wanted people to hang on every single word you know what I mean I didn't want to build up I wanted the whole thing to just be like a fucking you know full clip to your face you know what I mean and, and yeah I think going back and listening to that the approach was a little aggressive you know I didn't give I didn't let the, the thing breathe you know what I mean like and I think for me it in a sense of like changing what I do is, is when I'm when I'm doing uh when I'm on the mic or whatever, um, that's kind of the new kind of craft that I learned. And that's kind of the new, the new artists that I've kind of shaped into over all the years. And uh, with the producing, I feel like um, I just, I, I, there's something about the way the sounds move around, you know what I mean? Like the way the way you could hear something over here and then hear something over here and then bring it in the together in the middle and it makes this different sound i don't know i mean i i think i smoke too much weed or something when i produce <laughs> but no, that's i totally that's the that's what it is yeah another fucking planet and and you're able to to do this thing and uh and even with that though you know there's a there's a kind of a blueprint that you follow um you know i've always liked b-side to everything you know what i mean like sure protect your neck was fire like i love that one but what's on the back of it oh shit liquid swords fucking you know what i mean like shit like that scary yeah. powers you know what i mean i've always liked the b side of stuff so even with the premiere stuff the gangstar stuff like one of my favorite all-time favorite songs is uh, take a rest that's an old song too that's like early 90s maybe even 80s yeah. But there's something about that bass line. There's something about the way the drums move around, what he's saying, the content, the scratching on the hook. That shit just got me. You know what I mean? Like, and so when I when I produce, 
I kind of got that in the back of my mind. I don't, I don't want this to be a fucking, a single on the radio. I want it to be a single on the streets. You know what I mean? Where people are just like going crazy for this shit. And that's kind of like where I'm at with the beats. You know what I mean? I want every beat to be, to, to do its own thing, you know, even without vocals, you know, I, I'm going to start yeah. getting back into more doing like a lot of instrumental albums. Cause uh, you're right, man, you know, doing the producing thing, that's a whole different lane for me. You know, it opens up a lot of different opportunities for me and it has, you know what I mean? Like I've been able to, to work with like, you know, artists like MOP, um, you know, fucking uh, Chino XL, Sauce Money. You know, I got this crazy one coming up with those two guys on it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it's fucking, it's pretty wild, man. And, uh, and, uh, but those kind of things came together off, off the production side of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I can't. You can change your sound up so much through production. Like on the yeah. season, there is a through line through it, but each song is yeah. completely different. Like, I'm glad you realized, I'm glad you picked up on that because I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna lie. Like that, that whole thing kind of took a little while because I was legit waiting to get every song done with all the artists that I kind of like handpicked for every beat just so I could build it that way. So I could build it, it's gonna start here and then end way over here and touch a whole lot of shit in the middle. You know what I mean? And, uh, but that show it does show in the it does show in it and that's, do that's, you, how I, that's how i mapped it out do you map all your projects like when you work with like rob De Niro, do you map it out together like this is what oh yeah 100 percent, man and uh i think that was the the beauty of that album was that was my first time working as an artist that i wasn't producing on so that shit was that that was dope to me um and i feel like because you know it's crazy because that one started out like a year before it released as well so it started out like a year before we put it out and uh so it's funny and, and if you go back and listen i'm not sure if you heard the heard the album at all yeah yeah i have I've... the the very first verse on the very first song um was the first thing I wrote. And that was like a year before we jumped back into it and started going. So when oh, you damn. listen to it, you go to the second verse on the first song and you could almost feel and definitely hear, cause I know when I hear it, I go, damn, yeah, I got way better since then. And I learned how to record better, just everything better. I learned how to record myself better, mix it, put out a different product, uh, really sharpen the, the writing skills, you know what I mean? Cause when I did that for Rob, I wasn't really rapping, you know what I mean? Cause everything I did before that was just all production, all production. And so I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like he, it's funny cause he actually hit me up um, just, just randomly to do, uh, to do uh, some cuts on a song for him for some album, some different album he was working on. Yeah. And I heard of him, like I've known of him, you know, I love his shit. I'm a definitely, you know, that's my dude right there. And and I go, yo, yo, look, we should do something. You know what I mean? Just, just fucking around with him, just putting it out there. And he was like, yeah, for sure. What do you got in mind? I was like, well, send some beats and, and I'll send you back something to see if you're feeling it. And I sent him that and it was, it turned into an album. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but he was doing, you know, he was busy doing shit. I was, I had my hands full doing a lot of shit. I was doing the thing with Ito. And then I was doing the thing with that dude, uh, Back Pain. You ever heard of that dude? I, I, I'm not familiar with him, but I heard him through working with, you know, looking up your uh, collaborators. Yeah, I, got, I got some of that guy. And even though he has, he has a funny name, I, I guess we all kind of have funny names, right? If you really think about yeah. it. <laughs> he's a cool dude. Good kid. He's from, uh, shit, I think from Inglewood, if I remember correctly, somewhere, uh, somewhere down in LA. Um, and he has like this cool tone, cool flow, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, doing that was kind of cool too, because it was a whole, a totally different, like, I hate using this fucking word. It was a whole different vibe, right? It was like a completely yeah. different mm -hmm. So me and Ito were locked in doing this real heavy B-side street shit with integrity. 
And I was really excited to work with Etho, obviously, because that dude was Yeah, fun. how'd that come together being your first, like, album that you put out on uh, major streaming, not Bandcamp? Yeah, um, I think with, well, that it deserves that. You know what I mean? Like, that mm-hmm. album right there deserved to be, and uh, and I'm not saying that it deserves to be because it's better than everything that was coming out at the time. I'm just saying, for me personally, like, what we accomplished with it, how I felt about it. I was like, yo, this shit needs to be out there the best in the best way that it can so people could listen to it and, and be their own judge of, you know, what that, what that is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I got a lot of really good uh, feedback from that one. I think that was probably one of my, uh, <clears throat> probably one of my more favorite ones to do because it gave me a chance to work with, uh, with the bigger artists, it gave me a chance to really kind of step my game up because I knew he produ- he produces too and he's good, you know what I mean. So th- I think on that yeah. one, I wanted to, uh, you know, you want to try to impress people and let them know, yeah, I could I could hang I could hang with you. Let's do this. Let's make some music. You know what I mean? And it's- when that's your first project that like is out there, uh, you know, I of course you've been making music for so long, but that was that's the big one you know i mean that was a big one yeah. for me. um probably my you know at that time uh you know the biggest thing that i could have done for myself being a new uh new producer a new artist you know whatever so i'm glad it, I, i'm really happy with the way it came out man you know yeah but, do you look back at your, do you listen to your older music under different names or do you, is that a different, a, pa- a past? No, uh, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes I'll listen to like uh, some beats that I made or, or something that I started writing that I just never, you know, recorded to, or just kind of, I don't know, just got doing something else and forgot about it or whatever. Um, yeah. And sometimes I go, fuck, I left a lot of shit on the table. You know what I mean? Like, let me try to, dust this off or whatever but I don't there's know, man. so many similarities between rap and comedy like that like when like they're going back to old yeah. jokes and being like yeah. Yeah. oh my god this works with what i'm talking about in my life now and also when you were talking about like slowing it down and letting it breathe yeah, man, the better i get is the slower i am and you realize a lot of young rappers a lot of young comedians very fast and it's not you don't you know, get that chance. You want to know why? Because I, I wanted to get through it as fast as I can so I could see how people reacted to it. You know what I mean? Or, fuck, all right, I got that over with. On to the next thing. You know, you get this kind of, for me, I used to get this overly, like, this sensation of wanting to just put so much shit into one fucking thing that it didn't even give the listener a time to catch all the stuff because it's just too much of it i mean there is so there is such thing as too much flavor you know what i mean like, especially you know, now when the market is so <laughs> yeah and the market's so saturated there's so much music that like you just got to be yourself you can't you can't compete with anyone else because you're going to be competing with everyone else like you got to just carve your own lane yeah dude so it took me you know it took me a little while to kind of get get there and uh but I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, oh shit, sorry. Let me, uh, got that again. Oh, bro. Um, that shit, you know, that shit taught me a lot about, you know, growth as an artist, growth as a, just as a person, you know what I mean? Being a man, different experiences happen in your life. And then you, and then that turns you into somebody else. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I've had a point in my life where I was really sick one time and, uh, you know, I was on like disability and shit, all that. I was just super stressed out. I wasn't taking care of my body and shit like that. And I got, I got mad sick. Like I was in the bed and shit for like, fuck, probably like two months. And uh, yeah, kidney, like internal shit. When was like, that? This was probably like four, like three, a little over three years ago. So not that long. So right before I started making music again. And uh, so that, I don't know, just that kind of put things into perspective for me too. Like, man, I'm not living the life that I want to live. And that's being healthy, being happy, being fucking just chill. You know what I'm saying? Like no stress, no drama and doing shit that makes me happy. Like making music, making money. You know what I mean? Like 
Well, it sucks how life works I'm, like that. That the I'm, worst I'm, thing. I'm, I'll be honest with you. That that, and uh, is, and I'd be downplaying it to say that it's a job. You know what I mean? Like I got a, a legit career, yo, and that shit, and it's I'm very grateful for it. You know, it, it allows yeah. me to do a lot of things, and being you know doing music is is one of them. You know, supporting for my family and myself, and, and you know my lady and everything. That's that's another one. So it's uh it's a happy marriage dude you know what i mean so yeah well those tough times are when you grow the most and it sucks that kind of life works out that way but there's not a it's not like a coincidence that right before you started making the music and putting it out that that shit happens i got the reason i started comedy is i got in a really bad hockey accident like the worst concussion you could get like level five i'm trying to be like you're on the bruins or some shit <laughs> I played hockey. I went to the number one hockey high school and I did it for a girl. It was so stupid. I, uh, I got a really bad hockey accident and I had to lay in a dark room for a month. I couldn't do nothing. Couldn't listen to music. Couldn't, all I could do was listen to people talk. I couldn't even talk myself. So I just listened to comedy and shit, but it's, wow. it's the, the, the health things or whatever, the bad things in life is what when you can either that? go down farther the path or be like, nah, this is the time. Yeah, no, I feel you, dude. I, uh, same way, bro. I didn't, I didn't realize how good I had it. And, you know, I should have, I should have taken a step back and, and not waited till things got <clears throat> bad before, you know, they got good. And, but that's part yeah. of the lesson too, bro, is, you know, you don't really know what you got till it's gone type shit. And, uh, but, um, you know, you learn from it, man, and, and you get better. So, you know, you go through that experience you know, it's painful. It, it, you know, it's this, it's that. It's, it might be a financial burden. It might be a relationship thing or whatever. You know, there's all kinds of different things to trip you up, you know, on your way. Um, but it's what you take away from that, right? It's, it's that, that scar that you get, but it's that gym that you got for, for getting yeah, that what, gym. You what mean? Can grow from that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like that old saying, man, the, the first, was it? The soldier, first soldier through the wall always gets bloody. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's part of it, you know, is you think about it. You're like, all right, I got, sure. I got, I'm fucking bleeding and shit, but I got past that wall, man. So on to the yeah. next. You just got to keep moving. It's got to, you just got to look do forward. You, do you think um, that like you've been able to work with rappers, you live in California, but you've been able to work with rappers all over. Do you yeah, think I, like you've been in the game for so long like there's no boundaries anymore. like you can really do it from wherever like you can have a, a real like a full career and a family and take care of it and support the rap and do it from a place that you're not working with the the rappers one-on-one -on -one. i like that but to be honest with you i wish uh i would i, I would rather work with the artists in person you know what i mean because mm -hmm. this shit doesn't i mean it, it works and but sometimes you get shit back you're like fuck i wish I, he did it. It sounded good, but it wasn't the way, you know, I was thinking. And yeah. so you got some of that kind of like you could eliminate uh, time, right? So it's all time management on how efficient we could work and, and how efficient the, uh, the flow of that work could be. So we put out a really good product and there's no delays, you know what I mean? So a lot of that shit comes down to, uh, to the mixing and mastering part too. So in that regard, I wish I was able to uh, work more uh, closely with the artists and shit, just so we could actually mm -hmm. get a true uh, production going and all that. Um, but the hindsight to it is it's dope being able to have the, the access, you know what I mean? The technology and, 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 the, and the right people to, to get the things going. Um, you know, it's a business, man, you know? Yeah, that's how, yeah. That's how I feel too. Like you and I would have, are having a great conversation, but if we we're in person, that would be like a whole different thing, but it's great that I can be able to talk to you or whoever I want to talk to through zoom, but, but that in person. Look at, look at it like this. So as, 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 as much as you would rather, and you think you would want to, to interview with people in person. So look at it kind of in that other way, I was talking about so say if that person was like yo yeah i'll on the strength i'll be there but i'm gonna need like 300 dollars to do that do you want to take it and 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 make it a serious 
like a business doing what you do? And would you be willing to pay the money for it? Because that's what the rap shit's like. You know, you're going to yeah. reach out to Ito. He's, he'll do it. And he'll talk to you because he's a good dude. But you, you're going to, you're going to have to fucking drop something. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what it is. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. going to, I'm not here to tell, to, you know, tell you how much, you know, everyone goes for and nothing like that. Find that shit out for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you got something, yeah. bring it to the table. They'll let you know if it's dope, but they'll let you know if they'll do it or not. Um, same with me. I'll do it. Is, is it good? All right, let's rock. This is what I need. And, you know, the, the ones that are serious about their craft that want to make it a business, they, they do it. They put up the money and you move forward on it and, and you put it out. You know what I mean? So that would be, I guess, you know, the question to you would, you know, someone that you really want to work with that you know would, would, would be good, you know, rather it's comedy or, you know, you're, you're doing your interview. Yeah. Would you be willing to break bread on that? Spend money on it? I'm sure you have already, you know, you got a good yeah. mind there, right? You got, you're taking time out of your day. So yeah, it costs, it's, it's already costing you. You might as well make, try to make some money off it. <laughs> well, that, yeah. You got to invest in yourself and that's the, that's the whole point of it. And that's why I really like, I, uh, I really admire what you do is like you've been able to invest in yourself and have, be able to get everything you want done. And even the equipment, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to, like, you can't see my, what I got right now, but I got some, I got good shit. You know what I mean? I got good monitors. I, I'm using all the latest shit. You know what I mean? I got good turntables, good mixer. Yeah. Everything. I mean, I try to make you sure got to get the good. Stuff. I got a roadcaster pro for my soundboard. Like you got to invest in yourself. Yeah. But you know what I also spend money on is my resources. So I know I got people who could mix and master for me. Um, I know I got people who could play bass for me. I know I, you know, I got, I'm not naive. You know what I mean? I love doing what I do and there's, and I could play a wide range of instruments, but there's so many people that are way better than me. Why not? use these people that are around me to 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 further that you know what i'm saying like that's what all the big artists do they all collab with each other and then the beat and then the people behind the mixing boards they're the ones that make the fucking the magic dude like so you have to create the kingdom yeah you have to you have to outsource the, the stuff thing. you can it's the whole yeah. thing. And, and what you do you think you know the guy who does fucking who runs a factory you know, the guy who owns it, you think he's on the, the assembly line, putting it in a box. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, nah, he's, he's yeah. doing a whole other thing. He's trying to figure out ways to keep that factory going. You know what I mean? That's why I have Irish, Irish and Ani are the name of my two producers and they live in New York. And like, I wouldn't be able to do anything without them. Cause they really like, I'm bad at the, like, I like yeah, talking or- to people and I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to have this. Exactly. Like Howard Stern. You think he fucking, uh, promotes and, and gets the billboards up and all this shit out there. No, man, there's all radio people got it. Music people got it. Um, you know, recording or uh, uh, people who own uh, recording studios, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of shit. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to do producing, mixing, mastering. I could rap, I could, I could scratch, I could do all these things. And I got everything right here, right in front of me. You know what I'm saying? Like I could mm-hmm. get everything packaged and send it to, to someone who's going to make that even better. You know what I mean? So it's, it's good to have those kind of people in your corner too. But that's another thing. You know, these people might be your friends, you know, people you've known a while, people that you do business with, you know, don't, don't downgrade them either. And, or not downgrade, don't, don't uh, respect them and not, give them a little something. You know what I mean? I have a friend who was in the band with me. Good friend of mine, known this guy for fucking ever. Brilliant engineer. I give that dude like a hundred dollars for every song. And I know that sounds like not like a lot, but he's asking me for like nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah, that's my you have to, you have every to respect the people way. who put the work in. Every little bit goes a long way. So if I be like, yo, I got these nine songs that I need mixed and mastered, you know what I mean? Let me know how much you need and I'll take care of you. And He'll have that shit back in two weeks. That shit sounded crazy. He was the one who uh, he did he did uh, integrity and he also did the season. So he mixed and mastered both of those. Oh, and, okay, okay, yeah, really good, really, really fucking crispy. So 
the reason why those two took a little bit longer was I tried to mix them and it, I did, it didn't come out good because I didn't really know what the fuck I was doing. Um, now, you know, I've got better shit. I've got better at it. So I'm able to, I'm able to flip it, but I still think like, um, you know, if I'm doing something with a bigger artist and, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather, um, make sure that what it sounded perfect than trying to be like, have my name all over everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like produced by, written by, mixed by, mashed by. No, no, that's cool. That's dope. I, I, I know I could do that. But is that does that necessarily mean that it's the best thing for that album? And do you think that's where the music falls apart the most? Is in the engineering, if the mixing and mastering and stuff? Because I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. Like you could, it, I mean, it, obviously the nucleus is 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 the talent, right? So mm -hmm. who's doing it? Who's you know who's putting it out? Who's the artist? Who's the producer? Whatever. That's where it starts. But yeah, we've all heard artists that we love on a song and you go what the fuck was that <laughs> you know what i mean like that sounded weird or the vocals sounded off the mix sounded off you know what i mean there's there's songs that i got where they fucking just fry my vocals and it's like damn that shit sounds like it's sizzling on a on a hot pan and shit you know what i mean like i know yeah. i didn't record it that way <laughs> you know what i mean so they might have put a little extra heat on that you know what i mean so um but yeah you know i think a lot of it does uh you know, obviously the final product and, and that if you're selling it, you know what I mean? Like you're expecting people to buy this shit and, and be satisfied with it and keep coming back and buying more. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to go to the same place that burns your fucking, uh, your steak every single time? Like, yo, this is yeah. the 20th time this guy fucking <laughs> burnt my shit. You're probably not going to go back there anymore. Right. You're gonna be like, I'm gonna try the next, the next thing. You know what I mean? So just having that kind of respect for the, for the listener, man, that shit's important, bro. Cause these, these people are spending their money. You know what I'm saying? Like this is money that they, and this shit ain't cheap. Shit. I've seen, I've seen what some of these motherfuckers sell this shit for, you know what I mean? Like that's, that shit's a lot of money. You know yeah. what I mean? So, and, and even more so than that, not even the listener, obviously that's how we're able to, you know, move around and do our shit, but the people you're working with, you know what I mean? Like you, if someone sent me some half baked, shit and i paid you know five six seven eight hundred thousand dollars for it i'm gonna be fucking mad i'm gonna be like yo seriously this shit's off the mix the the vocal sounds fucked up like what the fuck were you doing plugging your nose the whole time you're rapping like what you yeah. know what i mean like <laughs> nah <I ain't> fine. <laughs> you know what i mean so and it's also attention like people are gonna not want to give you the attention like attention's the universal currency so even without that like if you fuck up so many times so yeah. you're not gonna i'm a straight shooter bro you know what i mean like how i'm talking to you is is how how i just address everybody man and i think people get the the sense that that you know um i'm gonna do what i say usually i, I do it to the fucking t but um you know what i mean when you're working with people bro different things happen you know what i'm saying and you just go fuck all right whatever you know what i mean it's just a bump in a learning time. experience yeah put it out make it dope and move on <laughs> you know what i'm saying like everyone's had that one friend you're like all right man i'll hang out with you but i ain't gonna call you when i ain't gonna call you on my birthday <laughs> yeah totally yeah. i'll see you when i see you but i ain't gonna go out of my way to see you motherfucker <laughs> right you burned me too many times what do you have coming down the pipe like who are you what are you working yeah. on next so I got I got a couple crazy ones coming, and uh, I know I've been kind of uh, a little quiet and shit, but I'm just trying to I'm working, dude. You know what I mean? I got my head down, I'm, I'm pushing it, and I'm really trying to get now it. You you haven't had a quiet 2020. You've had enough shit drop. Yeah, I've been trying to put out little singles here and there. You know what I mean? Just to kind of keep people out there. Like we, uh, me and Milano just dropped that one. Uh, it's called. Yeah, you got that album coming. Yeah, I, I think we put it up on. on itunes and everything it should be out there so check it out um good dude man love that fucking guy uh, straight shooter you know what i mean like just a just a good dude you know what i mean when you talk to him and shit you get a sense like man this this is a real guy right this is a real straight yeah kind of dude you know what i'm saying so um so me have you been working I, on that album together or is this yeah, is he I'll, I'll be honest with you man that one's probably been the most hands-on um as far as communication goes because 
like I said, you know, he don't really do texting or Instagram or none of that shit. He does the real shit, picks up the phone and be like, yo, <laughs> you know what I mean? He has a I'm dial. Nah, <laughs> yeah, he sends a fucking flyer and shit, bird. Uh, <laughs> a shit. pigeon flies through your yeah. window. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I, I appreciate that because that's, that's where I'm at. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm getting old too. You know what I mean? I, I'm not... 23, you know what I'm saying? That's 23 was a long I time like ago. Texting at all. No, texting, I don't even like yeah. that anymore. <laughs> I do it, I do it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say I don't. I even put a little fucking emojis and all that shit. And for me, I, I, yeah, call me, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the artists that I'm working with closely, we got, we're, that's, we talk on the phone and shit, like normal motherfuckers. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why these albums, I feel, like have more of a personal connection because, we've just been more hands-on and it has felt more like a, like a working relationship than just collabing with someone on, you know, on something, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, me and him got one coming out, 10, uh, 12 tracks. So it's going to be a full one. Yeah. I'm when gonna, are we, when are you expecting to put that uh, out? Well, he's done with all his shit. So mm-hmm. he's it's I, on I, you. I, yeah, it's on me. <laughs> so he's the one I'm, uh, he's, he's, this is, uh, the stuff I'm doing today is, is, uh, for that album, so I got. I'm gonna try to bang out uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of fucking verses. So I got a bunch of shit written. So, um, so that's that one. We don't got a name for it or nothing yet because we're still just yeah. putting it together, you know, shit. But um, so we got that, and then I'm doing one with the homie Jay Cyanide. Um, okay. Other good dude, man, really good brother. Um, same thing, you know, we fucking chit chat on the phone and shit bunch of fucking school girls and everything so it's fun and um but yeah we got one coming out uh probably realistically if if uh you know it's fuck it's already november man so i'll probably yeah. have probably milano will probably be the the only thing i drop uh this year um but but i'll probably put out at least a single off the jay cyanide one we'll figure out which one he wants to do make it dope try to get some visuals or whatever get, you know make it look good and then probably the album january so that'll be like 2021 right out of the gate type shit um yeah and another full length so i think uh i can't remember how many it's like 13 maybe something like that um bunch of dope features we got uh ill conscious another good dude really good really good uh really good bro um straight shooter those are the kind of guys i like working with man you know and a lot of those baltimore guys they're like that, you know what I mean? J, J Royale, yeah. Ilkhan, uh, Guy Grams, um, Ace Cannons, J, uh, Jamil, all those guys. Those guys are fucking cool as fuck. And they're all dope, you know what I mean? Like, those guys got a fucking super group over there and shit. They don't, need, they don't even need to make music with anybody else. Those guys could all just work with each other and, and, and be fine, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, they got the... Like, yeah, they got that's the, what, You don't need the boundaries anymore. Like, you can just be... Uh, but the fact that they all rock with people is dope. You know what I mean? That just kind of goes yeah. to show that they're, that they're cool dudes. You know what I mean? So, um, so we got that, uh, with Ilkhan, uh, the homie Napoleon, the legend, another good dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, He's real good. He, dope. he had yeah. an album with Gaio. He had an album with Gaio Point, who's, uh, anyone listening, he's coming up, I think within the next two weeks. Another. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, Another good dude, uh, Rashid uh, Rashid Chappelle. Okay. Um, and then we got Rome. We have Rome Streets on there. So I uh, yeah, Rome's great. Yeah, you know that one. That that's funny how that one came together because Rome's is another good dude. You know we we don't really talk that much, but when we do, mm-hmm. it's usually just we just do business together and shit. And he gets it done. It's a dope product. Put it out. He he promotes it. You know, he'll at least post it or some shit. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. You sometimes, man. It's like, yo, why wouldn't you want to promote your own song? You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. the fuck's wrong with you, man? Like, you got paid for it, right? It's dope. It looks good. Sounds good. But not, you, you know, don't promote it. Yeah, it's like, all right. It, you look at that like, all right, this dude, I was just a lick to this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy just got, he just wanted a, a quick couple hundred dollars or whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah that sucks yeah you kind of you like, like but you just do your thing you know whatever all right mm-hmm. on to the next thing you know what i mean so a learning experience you're yeah. like all right all right 
and, and you can't expect everyone to be on the same page as you, man. Cause like I, like you said, we're not all in a room together uh, working on it and everyone just gets that sense of, you know, yeah, these, this guy got true intentions and you know I mean? Yeah. All that. So and you don't want to be naggy. Like I get that. Like I'll put, I'll do podcasts with people and they won't promote it. It's like, all right, I get it. Like I, I'm not paying you. Like it, I do understand you got to take your time out of the day for it, but I'm not petty. I don't go and be like, remind people of anything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's not, that's, that's not me. No. You do what you do. And if you don't want to do it, then that's, that's it. That... I don't like to be the one be like five months ago. Remember I, <laughs> you know, no, so. and that never works. That ne like never have anyone ever done that. And they look back and they're like, "I'm so glad that that was." Yeah, yeah, that, that, that no yeah, no, fuck that. Yeah, no. this, that, that shit just ain't in my nature anyway. So fuck that shit. I um, whatever you know, you learn from it and you do your thing and move on and yeah. don't take everything so fucking personal neither. You know what I mean? Like everyone's just doing their thing. And no, because I'll look at things that I've done, and I bet other people have taken yeah. them personally. It's like, oh, fuck, like, I didn't mean to do that. Like, I just, it was a brain lapse. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I got shit going on. Something like that just happened where yeah. I'm not going to say the names. I'll just give you the situation. Good dude. Good dude. Like, we've done music already together. We, he's that motherfucker. He's a good dude. But he goes, hey, I'm going to need this verse back for this song that, that we've been said. It, literally, that song has been sitting there finished. Two dope artists, everything. Beat sounds crazy. I produced it and did the scratching. I did The song sounds fucking dope. And he goes, hey, I'm going to need that verse back because I'm going to use it on something else. And, and uh, you know, you and the homie could just do your thing with the song. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And, and I was like, yeah. I'll, probably won't, I'll probably just won't use the song anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I felt like I was being a fucking diva because then I go, yo, this song has been sitting here doing nothing for six months. I don't blame the guy. Please take the shit back. Use it. If you want to come back later and jump back on with something new and then we'll literally put it out that fucking week, let's do it. You know what I mean? But you start looking at those little things and you go, damn. And you want to take it personal because that's almost like a diss. But then you go, oh, well, fuck. I'm the motherfucker that didn't. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. yeah, I had it in my court, ball in my court for months, and you know, I can't be salty about someone wanting to, uh, to, uh, to push their product. You know what I'm saying? Like extreme ownership. There's a book named Extreme I'm, Ownership I'm, by Jocko Wilnick. I'm on board with that, yo. Because yeah, you have, no matter what, you got to own it yourself. Because yeah. no one else, like they're just gonna get defensive, and then like you don't build anything from that. And then you're confused on, on you know what I mean? Like what? are we really talking about so just being able to recognize that that helps out with with the relationships the way that we have them you know all through instagram through texting you know i mean i've only met like two of these guys in person you know what i'm saying like i don't i, there's yeah. a, I met ito i met fucking um the homie bugsy supreme cerebral that's my dude we hang out and shit um so that dude's cool as fuck um i've met huss i've met planet asia and like that's about it dog. like boo boo uh, uh ethos ethos guy down in san diego good kid mm -hmm. he's a good dude um but yeah i don't i haven't met a lot of these dudes you know what i'm saying so it's uh you know you got a relationship built off of one thing you know you got to be really it's it's a it's a you know you're going through the growing pains of it all you know it's a process exactly yeah second one thing goes sideways that whole relationship based off the foundation is built on could definitely it's going to get weird and it's probably not going to exist anymore because all these guys are working yeah you know, it's like, a tightrope and then they, they yeah. yeah everybody's working with so many different people they're like yo this guy's this guy's fucking drama i ain't fucking with this dude no more you know and then saying? egos get involved that's why i honestly like getting stoned all the time is because i know that i have a big ego if i'm not, not not to be, but you know, like you get defensive. And then like when I'm stoned, it's like not that you don't take anything personal. You're I like, know. yeah, I, I, and again, I think that comes with, uh, you know, I'm not an ageist or no type of shit like that. You know what I mean? But when I was yeah. 23, I was a little, I was more fiery dog. I was real yeah. quick fucking to, yeah, step, step up, speak my fucking mind, whatever. Um, but you know, you calm down a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like you get more like, you know, 
more like a lion. You know what I mean? You're just like, I'm just going to mm -hmm. lay over here on this rock and I know no one's going to fuck with me because I'm just, you know, you, you're yourself. Yeah. Principle. You know what I mean? And, uh, but it's that energy, bro. It's like that, that shit does come out of you a little bit. So you got to really kind of think about who you're working with. You know what I'm saying? So if you see someone real loud popping shit, you know, just being out there like that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe they're going through something, you know what I mean? And for me, I like to work with people that are down to earth, fucking chill. You know what I mean? I know a little bit about them, you know, their family or something, you know what I mean? I know something personal about them. Mm -hmm. That makes it, you know, that makes it now you can trust somebody, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so it's, so sometimes when you, when you go into it, working with these guys, you don't know what, you know, who's going to be like that and who's just going to be all business or whatever. So that's another thing you kind of just look at. And for me, man, I like to keep it business. You know what I mean? I come at people with a business mind all the time. And if it turns into something else, then that's cool. You know what I mean? But yeah. if not, then let's just work. Let's get money. Let's put out music and psh, I'm cool with that. It makes it, makes life easy. So, um, back to that Rome, the Rome track that we got on, um, on uh, Jay Sinai's thing is I, I, we were going to do a single fucking fuck that song's probably been sitting around for, I'm not even gonna lie. Well over a year, well over probably like almost two now. Oh and damn. The beat, I did the beat a long time ago. He, uh, he did the verse a long time ago. Shit. Matter of fact, I probably just, you know, actually it's, I didn't talk to that. Not, not too long ago, but he was just like, yeah, as long as it don't sound whack. <laughs> so, well, hey, Rome, you'll probably never hear this, but if you do, it's not going to sound whack. It'll, it'll sound dope. <laughs> he made it sound dope. Jay came correct with the verse. The mix will sound tight, and uh, that's it. The end. You know I'm I mean? looking forward to hearing that, and thank you so oh, much for – thank you for being on this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So let me walk you through the last two, and then it looks like we're. we're oh going. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just want to, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe when you when you interview people, uh, I'm a little bit like, I got like this hyper focus thing where I, I try to go back to the original thing that we're talking about. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I was the reason I did that. I was like, oh fuck, he has to make his album. He has to work on his music. He has one day. I don't want to take up his time. I got, I got all day, bro. I ain't even tripping. <laughs> um. So, and then I got, uh, then I got one with uh, Chino XL. So me and Chino XL got, um, I don't, you, you ever heard of Chino XL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, that's yeah. awesome that you got a, a album coming out with them. And you said you would work with them. Yeah, that, honestly, dude, all the, all the fucking, um, like the old me, like the old artist in me, like that, that dude's rhyme scheme and like the patterns, like, the shit that he used to do. If you've never seen the old freestyles that he used to do on like the wake up show and shit like that from like way back in the day, go check that shit out. He has one. I have and I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, go, you could go on YouTube and uh, just look up the wake up show, Chino XL. And that dude got a lot of crazy shit on there. So back in like 2000, 2001, maybe even, you know, 2002, something like that, maybe even 99, possibly even too, 98, something like that. Um, that's when that shit was like cracking. LA Underground, you know, you had like Razzcast, Exhibit, Chino, Crooked Eye, uh, Dilated Peoples, you'd have, you know, like Mad all Lib. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all these killers, dude. Guys that were coming up in their late 90s, early 2000s. That was like the best year for for hip hop, in my opinion, dude. Like everything was crazy like the beats were wild the lyrics i mean just the boundaries that were being pushed man everybody was coming out with really dope shit and la underground was 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 popping dude you know and then you had like a, a couple different styles though too you had like that real raw street shit you know what i mean and then you had stuff like ac alone and and uh mers and um you know fucking um abstract rude you know shit like that all of yeah. like project blow shit you ever heard of that shit uh I, not the project blow shit but yeah like all the other uh, like abstract mirrors and not rude. yeah that, dude you ever heard of ac alone yes mm -hmm. yeah, man. so that's another guy that that i've been talking to so that's that oh that's man, awesome dude, that can be special for me because you know everybody loved wu-tang everybody loved mob deep you know that raw shit you know 
Mm -hmm. That shit was fire. Don't get me wrong. But growing up in LA or LA area, you know what I mean? Being in the in Southern California my whole life, you know, there is a different kind of subgenre of of underground hip hop that was like fire, but it wasn't gun bar, gun bar, gun bar, drug bar, gun bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we were yeah, like the the cash like shit the, and the cr drop cr cr shit. Yeah, uh, so there, it's there crazy thing. But then you know, AC alone, and like I said, like all balls don't bounce, and then book of human language. Those those albums are crazy, bro. Like I do is I do is saying some shit. So you know being able to to uh to kind of grow up with that as it was coming out and being so close to it really kind of helped you know mold who i am too as an artist because like i said i love that street shit don't get me wrong that that shit speaks to me the most out of anything but i like the other side too where it's like you know intellectual you're focused in on like the patterns the way everything's layered on top of each other you know what i mean because i try to write my stuff like uh like I'm doing like drums or something, a real kind of move around. I like syllables. I like to tie things mm. back together and shit like that. You know what I mean? I don't like and to you're a sit it. down and write. Yeah. You're a sit down and write. Guy. Yeah. Okay. I got pen and, and paper, man. I do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> That's how I write too. I have to be yeah. with a pen and pen. I, I do it yeah. on my phone and every 10 seconds, the text message, uh, this guy's going oh. live. You know what I mean? Joe Biden, uh, one president. It's like, fuck. <laughs> I can't even get through my verse, man. I got all this shit popping up on my shit. <laughs> oh so, yeah, it's I try to avoid distractions when I'm when I'm when I'm rocking, dude. So, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, going so Chino XL. Um, excited about that one. We got uh, we got that's the one with Sauce Money. So we got we got a, a single with uh, me, Chino, and Sauce Money on it. So that's just gonna be pretty pretty crazy. Um, and that's twenty twenty one too. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'd say probably because um, it's 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 taken a little while to get it all done, and I think you know it's a combination. We both got a lot a lot of shit going on. He's busy. I'm busy. Um, yeah, and you also want to give it the respect it deserves. Yeah, we gotta take time on it. Whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Yeah. Well, that, uh, even with you, the season, you said you had to remix and master and you get yeah. it right. And that's yeah. what makes it that you have to give it that time. You can't rush. You can't rush that yeah. shit. Um, with the Chino one, we, uh, we just shot a video for it. Um, so we should have a video, at least a video and a single for it. in probably the next, I don't know, a couple of weeks or something like that, maybe a month. Um, just to kind of, you know, put it out there, what we're doing, give people a little dose, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, Sauce money, and then we got uh, the homie Ito is gonna jump on there. So it'll be Ito Chino on one. I think that one will come out pretty that's crazy. That's gonna be a crazy track. Yeah, that's gonna. Yeah, the beat on that one alone is is kind of is is nice, man, because it's dark, and I could already hear them both doing their thing on there. So that'll be good. Um, and then I got one that I'm probably as equally uh, excited about as uh, as. Um, the Milano one, because um, I have a little bit more involvement on on the mic, uh, you know, doing the raps and shit, as well mm -hmm. as production. Um, me and the homie Rick Hyde are gonna be doing one. Yeah, so oh, that one, Rick, that's gonna be really, that's gonna be dope. Yeah, that one's gonna be fun because he's Rick's a good dude, and he's you know he's coming up, he's doing his thing. Um, how'd you get? Did you just how'd you get in uh, contact with him? You know what? Through the homie Struggle Mike. He's the one that kind of connected the dots on the whole thing there. Uh, another good dude right there, man. Just solid, man. Like, I don't know. You, I don't know if you've ever got it. That should be someone you interview. That's a good dude right there, man. Get so, I've, been, I've been trying to dive deeper into his stuff after hearing your song with him. I'll talk and, to him. If you're down to make that happen, let me know. I'll fucking hit him up and put you guys in um, I mean, I really appreciate that. I'd love that because, he's yeah, he's dope. He's working, bro. I mean, that dude's got... I mean, you look at his albums, that guy got everyone on there, right? He got Conway, yeah. Benny, he got everyone on there. You know, he's he's Buffalo dude, you know what I mean? So he's, you know, he's in the mix, man. That dude's, and, and he's a oh, good he's a, dude. he's a Buffalo dude right now? Yeah. That's yeah. like Baltimore. Buffalo doesn't need to work with anyone outside <laughs> of Buffalo, but they do. They they yeah, have everyone. Got a lot of people over there, man, so that's, that's tight. Um, but, yeah, I, I reach out to him and, and, you know, try to make that happen. Um, uh, but that's anyway, gonna be a that, 
yeah, that's how that kind of came through. So uh, he connected the dots for us on that, and then we fucking made it happen, bro. So yeah, pretty excited about that one. Same thing. Beats are gonna be nasty. Lyrics, everything's gonna be. It's gonna be. Dope. You have three three years straight of you got planned fire music coming. You got nineteen, twenty, twenty one, just all all yeah, flame. I wanted, I wanted it to be like that, you know what I mean? And then those are just the four that I know one hundred percent for sure that are happening. Um, mm-hmm. They're already in motion, but yeah. you know, of course, I got so much more things that are like brewing. You know what I mean? It's just make you know making the time for it with the artists making sure the artist got time and, and, you know, all those other things. So, um, yeah, making sure everything else is correct in your life too. And not stressing any, and not uh, sweating anybody about it. You know what I mean? Like these guys know we're here to work. I'm here to work. They're down to work. We've communicated, we've talked. Um, so look out for probably four or five more coming out, you know, possibly 2021, early 2022 with, you know, four or five really good, top you know top spitters that i would consider and you know this whole little underground thing so uh, yeah and they're not even underground it's still underground but it's also like they're not because they're the kings of the under like it's like guys it's are so fun it'll be, yeah. it'll, be with, it'll be with the with the dope ones so i think people, yeah. people like it and um and then i'm gonna really probably start tapping in um tapping in more with you know doing just doing my own shit you know just putting out stuff on my own um Rather, it's instrumental tapes, um, solo projects, whatever. You know, I got a real close homie here in Oxnard, uh, my boy Mark Ford. Really dope, real talented man. So we'll probably do more shit together and just kind of keep it local for a little while. You know what I mean? Do build our own yeah. shit for a little while. So I think 2021, we're going to do a lot more Oxnard shit. You know what I mean? Put it all, yeah put yourself as a an oxnard artist on the map yeah ourselves for a little bit you know what i mean so we'll just do it like that um <clears throat> and uh yeah bro i mean that's that's pretty much it with the albums you know just doing just doing what i do man working with it as it comes in and uh you know just making sure we do a good job with it and not put out no wax shit yeah give it the time it needs which you have with all your shit man i Anyone listening, really listen to Body Bag Ben shit. All of it. The season is a great album to start with. Your album with Ito, your album with Rob De Niro. Your you got singles, you got everything. Like fucking, I'm a big fan. Everyone check it out. Do you want to plug? I love your social media at the bottom, but you have anything else you want to plug? Nah, man. You know, just just you know, shouts out to you for for reaching out and and making this thing happen. You know, what I mean, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, rocking with me and, and listening to my stuff. Um, you know, I mean that that means a lot, you know what I mean? So appreciate that. And uh, you know, just peace and love to everyone listening and everyone's happening in with me, you know what I mean, doing making these albums happen. Um, you know, you know who you are. I, I tell you, I, I thank you and I appreciate you every day. You know who you are. Um, you know, and that's that's pretty much it, bro. You know, I appreciate you uh tapping in. So I appreciate you putting in the time to be on this. Thank you very much. And if you're ever in Boston or if I'm ever out there, we should uh, meet up in person. You know what I mean? Hey, we got to go to Red Sox game, bro. Check it out. Little known fact right. about me. See that? Oh, shit. You got the Red Sox <laughs> tat. Oh, you're a big fan. Red Sox fan. Yeah, man. Been All right. You got to come out to Boston now. Sure, man. <laughs> I don't even know. Honestly, man, like. I bet you there won't be no in-person games next year, neither with all this fucking bullshit. No, probably not. Fucking and I, there's the concerts are going to be tough. It's it's all going to be a little weird for the next couple. I know, man. It's it's a bummer because I like going out. I like being out in the streets, dude. I like doing. I eat, yeah, cons. I always go to into a concert a week before. Like I just love live music. I love seeing it. Being at home and shit, you know. Me and my me and my girlfriend live in a, a really beautiful area, so there's just like. A lot of wilderness around us and stuff like that and then we got you know i got my studio and everything so it's you know we keep ourselves busy but we like going out we like doing shit so it's kind yeah. of a bummer that you know this shit has been going on i can't fucking believe that it's been going on it's already november dude and you know what i mean it's like it's crazy it's fucking wild to me yeah so you know just trying to stay the healthy elections over it's wild and, yeah and you know being out there and everything you know i'm not no fucking uh covid uh 
like overly obsessed with that shit, dude. But I, I try to make sure I'm washing my hands and doing all that shit. You know what I mean? Like totally. You know, I work on a working big, out I, is so good for you. Yeah, like taking totally care so of your immune system. Take care of your yeah. immune system, but also being there and making sure you're staying clean there too. You know, what I mean that's a big deal. So because you know, not everybody's fucking respecting that shit. You know, motherfuckers are not picking, at all, yeah. picking their ass and picking their ears and then touching the doorknob. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, fucked up so but anyway man yo um i'm gonna send I'll, i'm gonna send you some unreleased and let me know what you think man i can't wait i i can't wait to hear it uh thank you everyone listening please like subscribe and uh we'll see you next week Peace, bro. all right thank you so much for being up man this was a really great conversation it was awesome getting to talk to you yeah. let me know let me know about the homie mike too he's uh like i, I said definitely will He's, uh, I'm pretty sure he would fucking jump on it. So let me, just let me know. I'll, I'll put you cool. guys. And I, uh, yeah, I, I would love to, I've been, I've trying to get as many producers, rappers as I'm talking to. So if there's ever anyone you see, I'd love to put you in contact. I got a hologram mayhem Lorenz brother who was on this week. He has his debut album with DJ mugs coming out next oh, yeah. month. I mean, yeah, I'm here for the work, bro. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm yeah. down to work with, with anyone who's down to work and, uh, you know, we can make dope shit, you know, make some money, at least make something classic and fuck it, man. Just do it for the love yeah. of it. I mean, that's where do I'm it at. For the, do it for the love and passion. That's, that's, that's where I'm at, you know what I mean? So appreciate you, G. Just let me know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, awesome. And uh, I can't wait to hear that shit. All right, brother. Peace. All right. Peace. Thanks.